Hi, cruel world. <laughs> a guillotine paper cutter. This was sent to me to sharpen. I don't want to take it apart, so I'm going to show you how I would sharpen this or how I'm going to sharpen it today without disassembling it. Let's see how you can do it at your school or at home or your office without a lot of expensive equipment and without removing all these screws. And we'll also talk about maintenance. Now, those that subscribe to me know that my specialty are beauty shears and clipper blades. <laughs> um, but I noticed that most of you that are watching my videos are not subscribers and may not know who I am and what I do. I'm Bonnie McGowan. Our company is Benika Shears, um, the scissor mechanic and I teach sharpening, primarily shear sharpening and clipper blade sharpening, which is, by the way, is a great part of full-time career. And, um, but once in a while, because we have an office here outside Atlanta where we have our sharpening training, we have some unusual sharpening coming in. And this is one of them. I have sharpened these before and they came out good, so I felt a little confident. I charge a dollar an inch. And this is, uh, looks like it's about um, 25 inches, I believe, and so it would be $25 uh, uh, guillotine. Uh, she thought that was very reasonable, so I mean, I could probably charge more. So um, let's, let's see what we were working with to begin with. So she says she's cutting poster board. She's not cutting a big stack, so I've got like several sheets of paper here, and we're going to go through and see what's going on. So up here, See how it flips? So it definitely has a problem. Now, <clears throat> I have another video about what is sharp, and I said there was two definitions of sharp. Um, the, use, the word I use for sharp is usually means a very acute angle. In this case, this is the second definition, which means it's a clear cut angle. Might not be acute, but it's going to be a definite um, a definite line of where you go from one direction to the other. So this one here on the side is pretty much like a right angle. This one here has a slight a slight angle here. Let me bring the video camera around over here where you can see better. So you see this edge along here. It's really right angles and it's pretty well corroded. So the idea is that we want to get that corrosion off and we want to make it a nice crisp edge. Now when we're looking at the, the guillotine part, you can see how this has a slight angle and we want to make sure we follow that angle. If we do any rounding off, it's not going to cut right. So we want to kind of clean up this blade at the grind part, and then I'm going to go, you know, flat on this back side. Um, but if I take off too much, I'm going to clean this up the back side over here, but if I take up too much, there's going to be a gap between where the paper's cut. So all I can do is just maybe polish and clean this up, and then work on the grind. So let's, let's get started. Set this light over here so you can kind of see better what I'm doing. And I'm cleaning this up and then I'm also going to sharpen this. Now tools that I can use is I've got um, DMT stone. I use this for flattening my water stone. That's why it's got all this mesh in here. But that will work well. This is the coarse. <clears throat> and then I have these other little diamond stones and they work pretty well. This is a red and a blue. This is what I used last time. These are inexpensive. You can buy them online. There will be a link below. You can also um, buy them usually at maybe at a hardware store or a woodworker supply or um, maybe some sporting goods possibly, people to sharpen their knives. But um, these are like little handy stones to have around. The colors tells you what grid it is. So the blue is a 45 micron and the red is a 25 micron. On microns, it's different than grit. The higher the number, the coarser it is. 
So this would be like a 45 micron would be approximately maybe maybe 600 grit. This is the black, which is the extra coarse. I'm thinking just this blue will be sufficient. So I'm going to start on this bottom. And the key is, is I have to keep this perfectly flat with that grind. If I do any kind of rounding off, it's not going to cut right. So I want to do this without taking it apart. So I'm down here. I'm following what the grind is. And you'll see, you'll see it shine up as you come in here. And you want to look at that, that where it's shining and make sure that you're following the right angles. That will also tell you that. videos I've seen and the correct way to do it you would take these blades off sharpen them you might sharpen them on a belt sander or something like that but I don't want to take all these rusty screws out and maybe not be able to get them back in I just want this thing to cut it doesn't have to be beautiful but keep it straight if you start wobbling this way or that way stop Get a better grip on it and keep it straight. really messed up down here at this end. There's actually like a little chip in it. I'm not going to want to take off, I'm not be able to take off enough metal by hand to get that chip out. We'll see. my extra coarse ones might be easier to keep it flat. at all. I like to check my progression, make sure it's improving and not getting worse. I think it's getting worse.
that's that, that, there's that chip. That's that chip I saw. This is my rust eraser. on this side. These rust erasers might be good for maintaining these. To kind of keep the corrosion off. This corrosion creates a separation between the two blades. So this corrosion is really important to get off. Careful. At least it's not sharp or I'd have got myself. All right, let's try a little thicker paper and see where we are. I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit. position here. I think about it's on a good table. Okay, that kept better. Really not balanced at all. And there's a bad chip right here. So up into the chip, which is something I can't do by hand, but up into this chip out area, it's cutting much better. Work this a little bit more, but more on this side. Make sure you're not doing any any angling down this way. You've got to keep it flat. Sometimes, like uh, uh, when you have a chip on one side, you'll have a chip on the other. I guess that's where they come up with a chip off the old block. Nah, probably not. <laughs> Let's see if I've improved that any. There's the bad spot. My table's not big enough to really balance this like it should. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So since this is for a school, I'm going to call this C work. It passes, not with an A+, plus, but it didn't take me a lot of work. didn't take a lot of time. I didn't have to disassemble anything. And um, I think this is something that, given... Uh, the right tools, which are very inexpensive. This is something you could try in your school or office. And what I was using is a rust eraser, uh, some diamond paddles, hand paddles, and then I had used an extra coarse one, a little bit larger one. Um, my suggestion is keep this, before it gets to this point, you want to kind of keep the rust off, clean it up, uh, one thing that would work really well, believe it or not, is a nail buffer. As long as you're keeping it flat, you don't want to roll over that edge because that has to come, the way they have to cut, they have to cut you know, right at right angles. So um, it, if it's not chopping down straight like this, if it's, if it's any kind of a bend to it, 
and you've rounded over that edge, those edges have to be flat to each other. So hope you understand what I'm trying to get across and uh, that's my C work shortcut and sharpening a guillotine paper cutter without disassembling it and without expensive equipment.